Good morning. Did God deceive the people in Jeremiah's day? We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 9 through 13. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, that the heart of the king shall perish and the heart of the princes. The priests shall be astonished and the prophets shall wonder. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, surely you have greatly deceived this people in Jerusalem, saying you shall have peace, whereas the sword reaches to the heart. At that time it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A dry wind of desolate heights blows in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to fan or to cleanse. A wind too strong for these will come for me. Now I will also speak judgment against them. Behold, he shall come up like clouds and his chariots like a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe to us, for we are plundered. Now the judgment is coming to the king, the princes, the priests, and the prophets. Jeremiah complains that God has deceived this people by saying they will have peace. But whatever promises of peace that God has made, no doubt they are, wait for it, conditional. Look at the promises carefully. Look at every Bible promise you think you're going to claim because you will often find there are conditions. The conditions aren't there to make it harder for us. The conditions aren't there uh, because God is trying to exact something more from us. The conditions are there because in order to get to the, to the, to the good place, we, there are things that have to be done, and they are in our keeping. God has left the decision-making process with us. He can't make our decisions for us. And so we have conditions. So now, what did the people expect? They were up on the heights worshiping the idols there. What did they expect? Verse 11 tells us that a dry wind is blowing in the desolate heights. And you know where they worship their idols, right? You know that they took them up on the top of the highest the highest hills they had, and they worshiped them there. So yes, this is a reference. Jeremiah is, you know, God is saying, look, don't forget your idolatry. You think I'm going to answer your uh, what you want, and, and you're doing this? So there are conditions, and without the fulfillment of the conditions by the people, God's promise is not a valid claim for them. Some of us utterly refuse, and Revelation 20 points to a time where there will be no repenting, a time when everybody's made their decision and God finally destroys the wicked. They don't live for eternity. We talked about this back when we were in 1 Thessalonians, but they will be ultimately finally consumed because they've chosen unselfishness, and they, they're not going to move off of that. So this life is our opportunity to return. Friend, no matter how difficult it seems to you, no matter how impossible it seems to return at this point, don't believe it. Go ahead and be ready to turn. If there is any answering cord in your heart toward Jesus, then please return. And I'm sure there is. Why would you be watching this if there weren't? Throw yourself at the foot of Jesus' cross. Admit your guilt and look up to him. Look up in hope. Plead for a changed heart. Don't despair. Don't give in to that. You may finally be at that place where God is ready to do something beautiful for you, something undeserved. He wants to do it for you. God did not deceive the people in Jeremiah's day, and God is not deceiving you. He has hope for you. He wants you in his kingdom. He's seeking you. If we have any inclination to seek his peace, his peace is still available to us. Be sure of it. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, your warnings to Judah and Jerusalem are a reminder to us to seek Jesus now while there is still time. Please bless us. Please give us a deeper repentance if we're already uh, with you, but strengthen our repentance. Make it deeper. Help us to draw closer yet, Lord, to you. And you please bless us according to the riches of your mercies and give us the things in our life, not things that we deserve, Lord. Give us the things, the gifts that will help us grow towards heaven. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for your mercy and your great forgiveness. May we take, uh, take that promise to the full and return to you now while there's still time. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We can throw ourselves on God's mercy. He is waiting to renew us. And God be with you this day.